Okay, I've got one of the most difficult jobs in the world. I am the last Japan optimist. And trust me, in my world, the world of economics, finance, policy making, being a bull on Japan is kind of like someone looking in your eyes and saying, hey, Elvis Presley, the king is still alive. The king may be dead, Japan is very much alive, and Japan actually continues to push the frontier of economics, of the way economics and finance interacts with society, and indeed Japan, in my view, remains a big, big model, and overlooking it is a big mistake. I'm not going to revise up economic growth, that's the easy thing, yes, 3% growth, 4% growth, no, this is about zero growth, but attaining stability and, happening he uh, and happiness here. Look at what's going on in the world. Yes, we want high growth, but the reality is it is all and practically everywhere about debt, deflation, demographics, delusion. What I mean by that is policymakers thinking they've got some magic bullet. Japan knows all about this debt. We've got, we've got more than anybody else. 230% of GDP. Greece blew up at 130% of GDP, but Japan is not Greece. Japan's debt is owned only by the Japanese. Japan remains one of the world's largest creditor countries on earth. Every week, there's about $4 billion more coming into Japan than going out. So a tremendous discipline here. What that means is if Japan, and I don't think it will, but if it does, if it were to blow up, it would only hurt the Japanese, not the world. Deflation. Do you know deflation? You're in Tokyo now. Well, real estate prices here are back down to a level last seen in 1981. The wealth destruction here is tremendous. But despite this, Japan continues to be one of the wealthiest and richest countries on earth. People say, oh, China has surpassed Japan as the second largest economy. Uh, excuse me, per capita income is the proper way to look at this. And on a per capita GDP basis, Japan is about 10 times more powerful than the People's Republic of China. This is not to belittle anybody, but just to highlight with this deflation pull, the country is still standing, still has the best restaurants and the nicest city streets. That is a, a, a wonderful achievement. Demographics, yes, Japan is a big four rider. Today, we've got basically one in four people over the age of 64. How many years before China will have the same ratio? exactly 12 years. So learning from Japan, how do I cope with an aging society? Because an aging society doesn't run fast, it runs slow. Delusion on the policy side, well, there is no magic bullet, bullet. And it's important to note what Japan never did. Japan never took the easy way out. Japan never devalued its currency. In fact, the yen kept on strengthening. Japan also did conduct real regulatory reform in finance. The strongest ministry, the Ministry of Finance, gave up its role as a regulator. And Japan, in my opinion, now has the best and most unified financial regulator in the world. That, by the way, stands in sharp contrast to what is going on in the United States of America right now. Self-initiative, very briefly, what do we have? We've got after the earthquake, a dysfunctional government, but the Japanese people being extremely powerful. Voluntarism like never seen before, and this is really a very strong power. Where does the source of strength for Japan lie? One little story. My son, Japanese kindergarten, five years old, sports day, the 50 meter dash, the gun goes off, the boys run, and five meters before the finish line, the guy in front slows down, holds out his hand, and everybody crosses the finish line together. Don't give up on Japan. Thank you.